Hello. So I want to give you a real quick tour of Pivot Interactives, which is a website that we're going to be using to conduct some of our labs during distance learning. So the first thing you're going to need to do once you've navigated to the website is click this link that says join a class. There should be a code posted on Schoology that you can use to join your hour of physics. And you'll just paste it into the class key here and hit continue. I've got an account that I've already set up and joined the class with. And when, uh, so I can show you what it looks like once you're logged in. So it'll show your physics class and then it will list any activities that we've assigned to that class. The first one you're going to be doing is this pendulum lab. And if you click on view, it takes you to the activity. So if you scroll down, there's a little, there's a few directions here. You can either collect data from these videos or you can go build your own pendulum out of materials you have at home and use that to collect data entirely up to you. And if you look just below the video, there's some instructions. And then you're going to be doing three experiments. So you're going to be doing one where you look at release angle, one where you look at mass, one where you look at length. And you'll notice that some of these sections have points assigned. We're going to be scoring this right in Pivot Interactives and putting this in the formative assessment category of the gradebook. Now, the way you're going to get data. Um, so what they do uh, on this website is they collect really high quality videos of various science experiments and science labs that we can use to collect data. Now, they have not just done one pendulum video. They did a whole bunch with different lengths, different release angles, and different masses. And so what you can do is select a combination of variables. When you select a new combination, you need to hit go. And it will load a video that they recorded using those variables. And if I hit play, I can see them release the pendulum and they're going to let it swing back and forth. They did use a really high speed camera for this, which is why it looks so slow. Now, as far as where you're going to get numbers, so it has some numbers over here. This length five is not terribly meaningful. It's just a way of keeping track of which length it is. Same thing with the release angle. A is not a very meaningful angle. But this mass equals 195 grams. That's a pretty meaningful number right there. The way you're going to get the other numbers is in the upper right, there's this tool icon. If you open it up, you get a selection of tools. If you click on one of these, it appears on the screen. So I've got a ruler now. This ruler is also something I can drag around the screen. And if I decide I'm done with it for now, there's a little X I can click to make it go away. There's also a protractor that, again, I can drag. And if I need to, I can even resize it, make it bigger or smaller if that makes it easier for me to read the angle. And then the last tool is a stopwatch. Now, something that is really useful about this stopwatch is you can choose where to have a time of zero. So if I'm trying to measure the period, I'm not going to want to include the time while, it's while the pendulum is attached to this magnet. So if I go to the frame of the video that I want to start my timer at, and I hit reset, it's going to set the time to zero. We also don't have to pay attention to the frames or the frame rate. That's essentially some reference information. So then if I hit play, the timer is just going to run from that time. Now, you're also going to be making your graphs on here. So if I, I can enter data into this data table, the first thing you should do is make sure your column has a meaningful title. For example, if I'm working on the experiment looking at period and release angle, those are going to be the two variables that need to show up on my uh, data table and on my graph. I also should put units with each of these. And so if I just click on 
the box I can type in information. And then same thing with the table itself. And once I fill up the table, it keeps adding rows. Now I'm just making up some numbers here to give you a quick example. If I scroll down to the graph, I can use these drop downs to choose what goes on each axis. And it's going to automatically graph for me. And then as I add points, it's going to add those to the graph right away. So you can see that pattern as you enter data. If I want to switch what's on what axis, I can just use this drop down to very, very quickly switch. Now you'll notice this graph starts at a period of one second and an angle of 10 degrees. For this lab especially, we want that graph to start at zero, zero. That's pretty typical in physics that we want our graphs to start at zero, zero. So if I just check this show origin box, it forces the graph to start at zero, zero. And when it's time to do a line of best fit, if I check this linear regression box, it gives me the line of best fit. It's going to use the word period in place of the variable y. So the word, so whatever you titled the column that you have on your vertical axis. Then it gives me the slope. It is not going to include units on the slope. So that's something you're going to have to add. And then it gives me the release angle. This R1, that's just a measure of how good the fit is. So how well does that straight line fit match the data? Uh, in general, the closer it is to one, the better that fit is. And when it comes time to linearize, I can add a column by clicking on these three dots and I can insert a column to the right. I can even make a calculated column by clicking change column formula. And then I can choose one of these quantities and put in whatever calculation I want to do to linearize. And it's going to fill all of that in for me. And even if I collect more data after I've added that calculated column, it's going to automatically update for me. The last thing I want to mention is that we did post a Pivot Interactive's user guide on Schoology. Uh, you can use this table of contents to jump straight to a given section. And this has text directions plus screenshots and GIFs showing you just about everything that I went through in this video. And I encourage you to use this as a reference whenever we're doing something in Pivot Interactive's.